the Sports Vote Campaign Podcast. Invest in sports. Welcome back. This is the Sports Vote Campaign update for Sunday, February 27th, 2022, Season 4, Episode 10, War or the Lack Thereof. So, one final comment on the last uh, few years in Hollywood. Uh, the first party that I went to and uh, a former insider turned backstabber and his, who I believe is now um, wife, could vouch for this. Uh, we went to a party where uh, Johnny Depp, who he happens to have a picture of with his wife, girlfriend, Gene Simmons, a bunch of guys from Motley Crue and all the band members of the Hollywood Vampires, if you know that uh, band Johnny Depp is in, they were at that party. So my point is, um, again, don't tell me that I don't know what's up in the secular world. Um, there's nowhere to go from there. Um, you know, that that's it. It's all horizontal moves from there. I'll say this again, and somebody learned about this uh, in the last month or so, not smart to mock God. Go to YouTube and do some searches on uh, what happens. Just type mocking God or instant karma after mocking God or things like that. You'll see some videos of all kinds of things happening. Another stand-up comedian uh, did a routine making uh, mockery of of God and smacked her head on the ground in front of her whole, the entire audience and cracked her skull. Um, yeah. Keep it up. Keep it up. So six years of pilot market operation with a half million orders, half million, you know, individual orders on the market and uh, more than a quarter billion dollars in trades of over 23 million sports shares. That's where we uh, are on the pilot market. That has nothing to do with the uh, the learning market. So Mattress Mac lost uh, $10 million on Super Bowl bets. Um, is that supposed to be a hype story? Are we supposed to feel good about that? Is uh, that to tell everybody how much fun it is to lose their money? Um, I, I understand this gentleman has done a lot of uh, good things in the Houston metro area. Same thing can be said for mobsters doesn't mean you go out and promote this kind of stuff, and that's exactly what this is. It's promotion of gambling, and it's promotion of himself. And then the spin on the story was how um, how exciting it was, the ups and downs of losing $10 million in a matter of hours. Okay. <laughs> I guess that makes sense to somebody. Okay, so Mazers, uh, Trump organization, longtime uh, accountants, Certified, had certified financial records going back more than a decade, and then now decertified the financial statements. Is this where we, really where we are? Is there such thing as decertifying financial statements that other people relied on? All kinds of business decisions, all sorts of things were um, put into motion from those, and you just say, "Oh, never mind. Never mind." It's. Um, it's no longer we're no no longer going to stand by this. Uh, that's the end of uh, accountancy as we know it. Just put that on the record here. Former president decertifies ten accounting firm decertifies ten years of uh, financial statements. Yeah, this is worse than Enron and Arthur Anderson. So look that one up. Um, the SBA. So back on me personally um, to those of you. Wasting your time and resources um, chasing me for bogus claims or maybe even thinking you'll do the same thing. Don't bother. Um, 30 years. That's the length of time that this uh, loan amortizes over. And as I said, um, I may just leave it in place just as an insurance policy till I'm 82 years old. Then I'll be on Social Security and you can't take that either. So talk about a waste of time. However, there is a way to recover your claim. Um, acknowledge the gift that I gave you and uh, let me convert that to real stock and then get on side and help us find a single 
fundraise to publicize and you and everybody else will get more than you more than you can imagine ultimately so but this route won't work so keep your head stuck up your butt that's that's where it is and that's apparently where you want to keep it and uh so you'll just keep spending and spending and spending and never get anywhere with it um also last week the trustee in my personal bankruptcy case after inspecting um seven and a half years of records almost 30,000 individual transactions, as I've described in prior podcast. Um, filed a no-asset report, which means the case will close now, and all my assets are exempt per federal bankruptcy law. And just to save you some time, that means they're exempt, period. So whatever the, uh, whatever the bankruptcy laws don't cover, and those exemptions tend to flow down to the state level, by the way, uh, they flow through. Uh, whatever that doesn't cover the SBA UCC filing will cover. <laughs> so that's uh, two insurance policies. Uh, we're creating a comprehensive list of items um, that need that need attention on the entire ASM platform. This is all part of the transition to Alper and basically a complete cleanup job of things. So um, there are various components that maybe some of you are not even aware of. There's, of course, the iOS app. There's a uh, which runs the pilot market. You can access the pilot and the learning market. There's the web app, which is only the learning market. There's the website itself, which has both the .com side and the .org side, which is just the .org. Uh, AllSportsMarket.org is just the uh, learning market. There's the market maker system, which some of you are aware of because you've been using it for years now, and you're getting the various credits and share grants in, for. Uh, doing that job uh, and then just essentially we want to comb through it make a complete sweep of everything and make a an ordered list to give to ace and then subs you know to, to create a work order from and then begin finding his replacement because in the same way that alper is replacing me somebody has to uh, replace ace so i'm asking that um if you're so inclined uh, to pull, I'm not talking about individual trades like I couldn't get my order executed for this amount or whatever. I'm talking about things that don't work correctly, not things that haven't been done, such as building an Android app. That was tabled a long time ago. I'm not talking about that stuff. Just go through the system that we have, and if you see something that isn't working correctly that's in the live uh, that's in the live active mode, meaning that it's being used by it's the public facing uh, parts of the system, then I'd like to know about it so we can create a, a, com a comprehensive list and go through all of it. Um, I'd like to wrap this up, this list up by, I'm going to extend this out a bit because it, it, it probably will take a while. Let's, let's go all the way to June, June 30 on this list, the whole list, uh, June 30, 2022, please wrap this up. You know, if you're going to submit something, <clears throat> do it by then. March, April, May, June. That's March, April, May, June. That's four months. That should be plenty of time. <clears throat> Everything uh, hidden comes to light. That's Luke 8, 17. Again, not sure who this is for exactly, but uh, I seem to feel the need to repeat this over and again. Um, it's absolutely clear to me that the courts and the law are about power and not justice. All these self-important meat suits better enjoy their 70 or 80 years here and, because it's going to be ugly come Judgment Day. Uh, Elon Musk tells a judge the SEC's endless investigation is stifling his free speech. Yeah, I initially I thought Elon might be off his rocker when he uh, defended so aggressively against uh, the SEC, but then my turn came and... I think he's right. Okay, so um, there has also been uh, some news chatter about, I mean, the the brokenness of the civil justice system is something that is uh, not a new talking point. In fact, uh, it goes way back. It makes me wonder how many innocent people are in jail, especially those of a certain skin color. Uh, we've got some major problems with people in those positions of power uh, not discharging their responsibilities in an ethical way. No question about it. Um, what is the solution to that? Frankly, it's I think it's over my pay grade. 
Uh, nothing short of divine intervention, I think, is going to do it at this point. It's that far gone because the incentives are so skewed in the direction of injustice that I don't know how you would turn that around um, and put the incentives on the side of doing the right thing, especially when the very same players have to actually be part of turning that around. It's just highly unlikely, unfortunately. Um, so DraftKings reported their quarterly Q4 2021 non-earnings. If you go back to my podcast from, I think, two weeks ago, maybe a little longer, I said I'm not going to call this an up or down. Uh, number came right on the line. So uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call that a win because I, I didn't say it was going to be over or under the um, the guidance, and it was the loss that was being expected. So for the first time, they hit the target. You know, the the analysts got got some sense together and actually got the numbers right this time, although they're negative. <laughs> and even worse, the losses are going to increase this year. Uh, customer growth is stalled, and costs are still way outstripping revenues. What did I say? I said that it would be increasing losses over time. Did, didn't I not? Go back and listen. It's there. That's exactly what came out in the guidance looking forward to 2022 that caused the pro- stock price to go down about 20% in one day. And it's been pretty close to, I mean, it came up a little bit. Uh, these are always overreactions at the beginning, but it's still down in the 20s, low 20s, high teens. Um, lots of lawsuits, big piles of lawsuits. Those things don't disappear. Um, in fact, I would bet there are more of them now because of all the stock price crashing that's been going on. And then let's not forget the 1961 Wire Act and the guys in Florida who um, are really pursuing that case. Just need one good case out there, and then um, you're going to see more of them. And those guys in Florida that stopped the march there are the best shot we have at it right now. Okay, so um, effective, yeah, February 14th, 2022, as I've stated over and again, I'm nothing more than a custodian of this project. Um, I don't have any stock in it. Um, My documents have been poured over by more than one forensic accountant. Um, There's nothing there. Um, So what pay I've received has always been as a contractor. Um, I received the SBA loan from my personal services company, uh, like I, I think I said this on the uh, last Sunday's 70s podcast, but I'll say it again here. It'll completely fund the next two years of the transition to Alper. I'll continue to perform all my present duties and continue to bear some of the small costs over this period at no cost to ASM or the stakeholders. For those misguided folks who continue to try and defraud me personally with bogus legal claims and those who fancy the same don't bother, the SBA just filed a blanket SEC-1 on February 14th that covers everything I have and everything I will have until it's paid off. Any attempt to seize bank accounts or property will be will fail, guaranteed, and you will face the U.S. government as an adversary in your attempt to supersede their first position priority rights. This would be like trying to get ahead of a mortgage lender on real property and foreclose. It will not happen. This will remain in force for up to 30 years, and I may well leave the loan in place that long as insurance against fraud against me personally. Add to that my valid and legally effective vow of poverty, and I become completely legally judgment-proof. I've already looked at all the exemptions. I easily go under them all. Don't believe me? Ask your favorite corrupt lawyer. This two-year funding gap, uh, provi- will, bu- gap funding will take care of all the resources I need to get the HollywoodSportsBible.com and other related projects underway. So uh, on top of that, like I said, the bankruptcy trustee filed a no-asset report declaring no assets available for distribution and all exempt. So that's further corroborating the same statement I just made about uh, basically the trustee, as I said, says there's nothing there that can be that ex- can be taken and for uh, payment of creditors. There's nothing there to distribute. And um, anything that might be there is exempt, meaning it can't be taken because it's under the under the uh, maximum numbers 
And then you have the SBA who has claim on anything above that, which, you know, if there was something above the numbers, <laughs> so everything up to the minimums, or I guess the maximums of assets is exempt per bankruptcy law. And everything above that number is owned by the SBA. So, you know, go waste your time and money. Keep Just keep on digging that hole. It's, I'm sure it's a big hole at this point. Just keep digging. Um, my personal funding will um, cease, the, the accounting, rather, will cease effective immediately. There's no, I don't have any fu uh, further need to request for any, even the basic expenses. It's more than adequately covered um, by this uh, loan by the SBA. More than adequately covered for the next couple of years. Um, I continue to receive inquiries about funding accounts. Um, people wanting to fund the pilot market accounts. In case uh, you think that there's no interest, that's not true. They, I probably get at least a couple a month at this point. Sometimes I may get a couple in a week. So uh, that's a good statement. Once again, it all comes down to the one formal fundraise and publicizing of that fundraise. Um, there is an attempt to sell the Denver Broncos using a blockchain DAO, distributed uh, organization. Uh, it may well work because of all the hype around crypto, although things are getting a little bumpy right now. Again, this is proof of concept. Uh, you know, for us, I say this is proof of concept, although a much better concept than uh, making up currencies out of thin air, um, ways to sell off companies and raise money for, I mean, leagues and, and raise money for leagues. So keep an eye on that, Denver Broncos. Um, so Mr. DraftKings says that um, sports betting revenue could help address homelessness and mental health. That's a complete lie. This never happens with any initiative of gambling anywhere. Lotteries, all of this, do your research. It's always put out as some kind of savior for financial problems when it in fact creates more problems than it helps. It will create more mental health issues, homelessness, and other problems. Just drive two minutes outside of the Vegas Strip and take a look around. Case closed. Pilot Market, six-year anniversary just went by. Uh, that's also the six-year anniversary of no action on our no action. So something for the SEC to keep in mind in their uh, negotiations with us to settle this case that will fail in the courts, guaranteed. Um, that point alone is deadly. No action on the no action for six years. That's not going to be explainable. Um, okay, so New York investigation prosecutors quit in the, to the Trump org. This is just uh, – <laughs> this goes back to the corruption of the, of the legal system in the courts. Um, judgment Day is coming for this Republic of Lies. Judgment Day is coming for this Republic of Lies. The laws, quote-unquote, crooked lawyers and the court, courts, court, courts quote-unquote, are a complete fraud. Complete fraud. This is getting worse by the day. Um, all right, so one more comment about the SBA. Um, I have to get permission from the SBA to liquidate anything under their lien, which is basically everything I have because I'm a sole proprietor. Vow of poverty, federal law, and state law regarding exemptions keep everything fully exempt. So the term is judgment proof. So just look it up. Um, DraftKings stock, yeah. Okay, so the guidance, this is just another comment. I said they would continue to lose money at an even faster rate, but the, the guidance was probably right this time. Um, flat nailed it. So I'm going to take a victory lap on that. I got both those points right. Um, Proverbs 1813, I believe it is, um, about preventing someone from answering a complaint or speaking in open court. You know, there's just so many Bible verses that deal with this kind of stuff. So apparently the issue of c corrupt uh, court systems is not something new. But um, if you um, 
If you prevent a defendant from answering a complaint or even speaking, yeah, your day's coming, bud. Every single person who has ever touched these things is going to have their judgment day. So I know everybody's mind is on, are we in the middle of World War III? Um, I'm not sure. It looks, you know, there's always points and counterpoints to uh, these propaganda wars that go on when there's a military conflict. Um, I'm not really paying attention to that stuff, The whether Putin is making his objectives on timely and all this kind of armchair quarterbacking. What I am watching is the market reactions, um, money market, stock market, uh, this discussion of pulling Russia from the SWIFT system. That's an interbank transfer system, mainly international system. I'm watching the squeeze that's being put on from the outside world. Um, financial squeeze, not just U.S. sanctions, but every other country's reactions, like pulling air routes, uh, basically blackballing Russia, and even internal uh, Russian opposition, you know, inside the country saying, what what the heck is all this about? Um I think he bit off more than he can chew here, but I don't want to comment on that part. What I want to, you know, that's there's too much going on and too much fluidity in all this to say what's uh, where this is all headed. If I were going to venture a guess right now, I would say some kind of negotiated end is going to come pretty quickly. In fact, those talks are already um, being put on the table. I don't think this went exactly the way he thought it would. I think he thought he was going to be celebrated and um, that would be different as far as the way the rest of the world would look at it. But the rest of the world is coming down really, really hard. Um, And I don't know that they can, I don't know that he can deal with that. And I don't think he's going to declare war on the entire world because he didn't get his way. Um, But he might. You know, it's it's really too much to to take in at this early stage. But I do want to get uh, to making a point about something I wrote more than 10 years ago about wars being wars of information and not wars over resources. And, of course, everybody knows that cyber war – cyber war was not a concept that was being passed around when I made, made this statement, a uh, public blog post – um, on the newsportseconomy.com site, which I did archive and take down, but I, it was there for a long time. Wayback Machine probably shows it. Um, basically, that it's um, the wars of the future would be information wars. This was even before um, crypto came along. And because it's really just not a good spreadsheet exercise to take a country over and then be responsible for it. Um, I think that in this particular, there will be some of those cases. I think that this um, this particular situation has more to do with NATO encroachment. I think he was getting very paranoid about NATO encroachment on Russia, and I also think it's got uh, to do with uh, port access through the Black Sea because Russia really has no access to the water uh, on that uh, trade routes. You know, coming out of Europe, there's there's no way to get out of there because Russia's landlocked. Um, so I think that's part of it. I think it's a big part of it. I think it's, um, trade route and, um, and NATO encroachment being, I think if you asked him in a, over a beer, he would say that it's, uh, uh, getting freaked out over all these new NATO countries. He's feeling ganged up on, pushed into a corner. It's a very smart man. I'm not going to call him evil or anything like that. He's very intelligent. Um, I, I do think that this is going to be negotiated to an end. I think he can put down his ego. Um, actually, I don't think he has anything close to the ego that our former president did, and I think he can realize that this isn't going to work out um, and save some face and get out of it. But that's all just um, spitballing. So. What I want to talk about is um, what most of the time, what I put in that blog post 10 years ago was that most wars are a function of lack of resources um, and that the new sports economy driven by the ASM market engine, at least in the beginning, because it's the one one model we know of that will work given a chance, 
uh, that it will lessen those things. So am I saying that it would have stopped this particular um, conflict? Maybe not. You know, even if it was alive 25 years ago, it may not be mature enough. But am I saying that in the future that um, if we're given the opportunity to prove this case one time with a sports league or an esports league, you can start the clock from that day. From the day, look, from the day that the contract hits my desk, the one that was from NRHL that got screwballed, which ultimately resulted in their death. We're here, they're not. Uh, if that day comes, like it should, you, you know, and that hits my desk and I can work out the publicity plan and, you know, to get the word out, you can start the clock on the increase of general prosperity around the world. Ultimately, will it take 10 years, 20 years, 100 years? I don't know, and I don't care. I just know it will happen. Um, and that conflicts that would have otherwise happened uh, won't happen. But, you know, it's like how can you identify risks that you successfully hedged when they just don't happen, right? I mean, when you successfully hedge a risk, oftentimes you can't even know that you ever hedged it. But... I am just as confident today, if not more so than when I said this somewhere between 10 and 15, probably 13 years ago, for somewhere in that range, um, that I think it was 2009, so this is 2022, way back machine, well, it'll be there. Um, 2009, I think it was. The day that, you know, not, not only will, when, when that, order hits my desk and I can pub route out the publicity, put the plan together, route out the publicity, not only will that bring everybody whole and then some beyond your wildest dreams in terms of return on your stake in ASM, but it will put the fix in, so to speak, <laughs> the positive fix, and to uh, prevent future conflicts in the world. Absolutely. I stand on that 100% because I've, I've studied this enough behind the headlines and other other wars and regional disputes and stuff. And no matter what story they tell, when you get right back behind it, um, it's always a business. You know, even I have a friend that was a, basically a soldier of fortune. He's told me stories. And at the end of the day, all these wars, no matter what kind of cover story they give you, they're always about some kind of business arrangement. You know, getting something that they need or... Um, if it's an existential thing, preventing uh, a supply line from being cut because it would uh, threaten the nation or whatever. That, that's really what it comes down to. It comes down to money. So if you create more prosperity, general prosperity, and the thing is ASM is just as uh, – the, the system is just as capable of funding the New York Knicks as it is in, in funding a soccer team in, in the Congo. So it, it, it can create prosperity on the ground anywhere it touches – the ground, uh, from the top of the of the range to the bottom of the range. So, yeah, I do think so. I do think that um, I can't speak to this particular. You know, would it have stopped this this major? I don't. I don't know. I my gut tells me this is more about NATO encroachment and feeling pushed into a corner uh, and miscalculating the political wins in terms of especially internal support for this, which I think is not nearly what he thought it would be. Um, I think the international community community is coming down far harder than he thought they would. It's going to get really, really tough, really, really fast. Um, and then I think access, because really Russia's only real product is is petroleum exports, oil and gas. And I think that there's a, some worry about being able to get things out because they don't have port access except through the Black Sea. Um, you know, through, uh, I think, the Turkish Straits. I'm not an expert of this part of the world, but from what I can see, that's it. Um, I think that's a bigger issue, is is that. So would ASM have uh, forestalled? I Probably not, if that's the reasoning for it. But, you know, a rising tide raises all ships, as the saying goes. So if you create more general prosperity, it generally flows everywhere. So, yes. Some in some, I, I would say that ASM would would uh, will, uh, given the opportunity to demonstrate itself, 
uh, hedge future conflict perpetually. Absolutely, I believe that. So um, that's all. Uh, if you want to keep up with the resources, look in the show notes. The links will always be there. Thank you for your time, and I'll speak with you again in two weeks. Bye now.